Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how bloggers typically make their money, what they all have in common, especially the ones that make around a million dollars or more per year. So I'm going to use four different blogs as examples, and I'm going to kind of walk you through the process of what they typically do. So the blogs I'm going to use as examples are johnchow.com, entrepreneur on fire, which is at eofire.com, and then smartpassiveincome.com and making sense of sense.com. So all of these are pretty effective websites at getting traffic and making money from it through blogging and internet marketing. So the first thing you got to do that these different websites have done very well is find a niche. So you need to be able to crank out content very frequently and be able to stick to a certain industry and attract a certain target audience. So a few tools I recommend for doing this that are um, easily available for you online. One of them is Google Trends. You can go to trends.google.com. And what you wanna do is look for you know things that are trending up that might stay up in the future. So like I just did a random thing like TikTok. So this is like a new social media type platform that's gotten really popular over the last years or over the last year or so. So you notice that, you know, there's pretty much nothing about anything like that. And then boom, all of a sudden it's taking off. A lot of people are searching for it all the time. Um, you can type in all kinds of stuff. You could even be, you could even do like video games or something. Let's say you typed in Mortal Kombat 11 or something like that. And so you got something like this that, uh, you know, when the game comes out, it trends up. So if you did like a video game blog, you could do each each video game as it comes out, do a bunch of content about that game and then move on to the next one when it comes out. So you can use Google Trends to figure out kind of what your niche would be, how to find keywords and topics for your blog post. And another thing you can do is use the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. So this is at ads.google.com. They have a keyword planner here where if you type in different keywords, Let's say you typed in internet marketing just as an example and you click get results. So it will tell you an idea of how competitive that keyword and related keywords to that are, the average monthly searches and the bid amount. So if you wanna monetize your blog with ads, you'll definitely wanna look at these bid amounts right here, which internet marketing, they're very high. Anything that's related to a product or service that might be sold is going to have much higher bids. So terms like internet marketing, business, lawyer, insurance, anything that has to do with buying a product or service. That's why review sites do so good on ads because they are talking about products that people would buy and they attract an audience of people on the verge of buying something. So you can use those two to figure out traffic. You wanna go for lower competition and higher traffic if at all possible and uh, longer tail keywords, which is basically just the topic you're trying to rank for. So a longer tail keyword would be like internet marketing, you know, services instead of just marketing. So the more words in the phrase related to that topic, the easier it'll be to rank for. Um, and then you can check competition. If you're monetizing with ads, check the bid range. The higher that is, the more you could probably make from ads and ad revenue from something like Google AdSense. And then you have monthly searches, which is kind of the traffic ceiling as far as how much traffic you could potentially get if you rank on the first page for it. So they build a blog based on a certain niche, whether you're covering your favorite sport, whether you're doing reviews on software, whatever it is, make sure you know that and you make sure you can build enough content to stick with it. Look for other websites that are already popular there to see if there is potential and use stuff like Google Trends to figure out, you know, what's something that's kind of recently taken off in the last five years or so and that might stay that way in the future so that you can kind of build off of different trends. And the next thing you want to do is create daily content. So you'll notice that, let's say johnchow.com, you'll notice that the dates on these blog posts, usually they're cranking out at least a post every day or so. 
Now, you don't have to necessarily write these yourself, but starting out, you probably will. Unless you have a co-founder or an employee, if you're starting out with plenty of money, you can hire somebody to do this. But um, once your blog starts getting traffic, you can do like what John Chow does, and you can create a contribute page. Now, I don't know what they're, if they even have a contribute page. I wasn't able to find the one for John Chow. You probably just have to go to their contact page and pitch an article to them. But um, if you go to entrepreneur.com, this is a website built on contributions by other entrepreneurs. So their blog posts, and they, and they publish like 50 new blog posts per day, but they're coming from people who are contributing without having to be hired. So this can keep your costs down and allows you to automate the content of your blog this way. So a good example would be to just go to Google and look up the entrepreneur contributor guidelines page. And this kind of gives you an idea of how you could model your own page after this if you don't want to always write your own content. I like to write my own content right now because it helps me ensure that I can keep improving the quality in my own way and I don't constantly have to read uh, guest post pitches that I get via email, which I get a lot still, even though I stopped uh, accepting them. So another example would be eofire.com. Now they use a podcast combined with a blog. So they do blog posts. If you go to the blog section here, you'll notice blog posts by uh, some people who work for the uh, website. You also notice that the podcast is something that's pretty much daily as well. And they do what we call show notes. If you click on one of these episodes, you can listen to the episode in the browser, or you can subscribe at Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. And then they have different points, links, and things that they mention throughout the podcast episode, kind of like how I do with video show notes. Um, so that's another thing you can do. And when you check the dates on the podcast, typically you'll notice that they post every other day at least. So top blogs post at least every other day. But in many cases, if you combine the blog post with their podcast episodes, they're probably closer to every day. Another example, Smart Passive Income. So this is a brand that also has videos on YouTube. And Pat Flynn also has a podcast as well, which I'm pretty sure is daily. And then they also do blog posts. They also publish books. They do a lot of content. So you'll notice that their podcast, they don't do them as frequently, but they also do YouTube videos and they do blog posts. So if you combine all those, they're probably doing daily content. Um, obviously, you can account for social media posts as well with that because that is a form of content. But uh, most social media, you might want to do multiple times per day on each of those. But another thing is makingsenseofsense.com. You'll notice their blog posts come out very frequently, like every other day. And so um, they have, they, she also has a very big uh, following on like Pinterest. So you might factor that into their daily content. So I recommend daily because it's easier for you to get experience faster. It helped me learn a lot of lessons faster and helped me uh, start improving my brand uh, a few years ago when I started doing stuff daily, whether it's videos, blogging, etc. Another thing you want to do, and you'll notice that I just exited out of a lot of pop-ups on these blogs, is you want to build an email list. So let's say you go to johnchow.com. You'll notice that usually when you first go here, you'll have a pop-up in the middle of the page, and then it'll pitch like a, a free ebook or something like that. And then something will happen on eofire.com usually as well. And then Smart Passive Income. You'll notice that I kind of exited out of those at the beginning of the video. So if you go back to the beginning of the video, you'll notice me um, looking at those. And then you'll notice that some of them have something that just stays on the page. Um, so you have like making sense of sense.com. They have something at the very top that has to do with how to save money and make money. And you can enter your email address to get their latest content. So you want to build an email list no matter what kind of blog it is, because that's like your personal social media following that an algorithm can't take away from you. You can't be, you know, penalized on with your own email list usually, unless you're just doing something really bad. And what you need to build an email list, it, obviously the blog or some sort of content, and then you need 
um, a way of collecting them. So GetResponse is one website a lot of these bloggers use. Another one is aweber.com. I've used both of those. I prefer GetResponse right now, but Aweber has done a lot of changes recently to kind of update theirs. So they're both really good. So either one of those, they're they're very, fairly similar and they're competitors. You can also upgrade to something like Infusionsoft later on if you want to get more into like e-commerce type stuff. But those three are three of the biggest ones right there. And if you're on more of a budget, e, uh, Aweber and GetResponse would be better. So now you're doing daily content. Obviously it needs to be high quality. Typically you'll notice that a lot of the blog posts on these sites are fairly long blog posts. Um, unless they're doing their blog mostly from show notes for like a podcast or something. If they're doing blogging as their main source of traffic, like making sense of sense does, usually they're going to be very in-depth blog posts. So you need to look at your competition and try to outdo their blog post with yours and then rank for your industry's uh, low competition, high traffic keywords. And then after you're doing all that and you're building an email list, another thing you need to do is figure out how you're going to monetize your blog. So a lot of these bloggers I'm showing you, pretty much all of them are millionaires. So I'm going to show you the main ways that they typically um, monetize one of the main ones is affiliate marketing so affiliate marketing is basically you get a commission to promote other people's products and every time you get a sale for that product you earn a percentage of the cost of that product so amazon has probably the biggest by far as far as an affiliate program they pay you up to 10 percent, which you can get higher percentages in a lot of websites but they're not going to have the the products that Amazon has. That's kind of their leverage. Um, you can do like ClickBank. You could get higher percentage commissions, but these are mostly going to be digital products like courses and eBooks, and they have all different sorts on there. Or you can do like private single website affiliate programs like Bluehost or something, which is another popular one because they pay you like $65 per uh, referral. Um, that qualifies. So when you get them a new customer, you get like $65. And that's why not only because it's a quality company, but because they also have a good affiliate program that they're so popular, especially with bloggers. So as far as affiliate marketing, those are a few different websites to check out. You'll notice that a lot of these websites I'm showing you, I'm using them as examples because many of them actually post their numbers. So you can see how they're making their uh, millions of dollars per year and hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. So if you kind of scroll down here, you can see that on making sense of sense.com as an example, you'll notice that she does like a breakdown and a graph. So affiliate marketing is more than half of her income and she makes over a hundred thousand dollars per month. So just doing that alone could make you multiple six figures, maybe even close to seven figures by itself. Then she sells courses, sponsored partnerships, and display advertising. So that's kind of a breakdown. You can also look at the d different affiliate uh, programs that they do if you have a blog that's in a similar niche. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be hard to do the same programs as them. So Smart Passive Income, you know, they did it for a long time. I don't believe that they do these anymore but you'll notice that they made 100 or or you know maybe two hundred thousand dollars per month and then uh you'll notice like the last one they did was december 2017 and he posts his numbers as well you'll notice that they have a lot of their income from things like affiliate marketing they might make a little bit from advertising on youtube and they'll make a lot from their own personal um product sales as well. So your income breakdown, affiliate earnings, you got like Aweber, Bluehost, ConvertKit, lead pages, and stuff like that. You got books, courses, niche sites, podcast sponsors, which is basically ads, and then software and apps, which is their own digital products. And so uh, Entrepreneur on Fire does the same thing as well. You go to the income breakdown at the top right, you can see their breakdowns as well. Pretty much a lot of theirs are very similar. They have a lot of affiliate revenue. 
They'll have a lot from things like um, ads, especially if you have a podcast, ads are a big form of revenue. And then they'll have a lot from their own products, like their journals and courses are a big chunk of theirs as well. It's right around 21 or 22 percent. So um, John Chow doesn't post his numbers usually, but I've seen some things in the past that lead me to believe he's at least a multimillionaire. So then you have your own products. So you notice that on, on a lot of those graphs, their own products was a big part of it. So mostly when they're talking about selling their own products, they sell courses or eBooks. And then they might get into physical products later on, like uh, Pat Flynn did with Smart Passive Income. So you look at like Smart Passive Income and when it talks about his own products, he has software and apps, made about $10,500 that month from them. He has courses, just under $42,000. Books, just under $2,300. And then they have $105,000 from affiliate earnings. So then you have making sense of sense. So, you know, they'll have something like, you know, maybe 60% from affiliate marketing, but then they'll have courses that take up maybe 15%. And then you have Entrepreneur on Fire. So they have, from their personal products I mentioned earlier, they have about 21% total from their own products. Then they have affiliate revenue, then they have ads. So you can start out creating your own course at Udemy or Teachable, and then that just kind of makes it easier for you, and they might take a cut of the sales. So then you'll want to eventually do what those people do and uh, host courses on your own website or in some way that doesn't cost you um, commissions to a third party. So you can get third party software, but you don't want to have to pay a commission on every sale like uh, Udemy and Teachable do. That's that's when you're starting out and you don't have you know customer support people and you don't have a lot of website skills or you don't have the money to hire somebody to set all that up. But eventually you can get something like Optimize Press, which is kind of the next step to doing it on your own website, which allows you to keep people from accessing your course on the website until they've bought the product. Now, when you host a course on your website, many times people might find the link and they will do it for free without paying the money. So that's, of course, what you don't want. You want to make sure people have to pay to get access. So Optimize Press is a a tool that lets you do that if you have a WordPress blog. It comes with optimized member. You can do membership sites and collect membership fees. So you can do all of that stuff with something like that if you have a WordPress site. Um, and then you you know you can always hire somebody to do all the code and everything for you if you wanna just go from scratch. So we've covered affiliate marketing. We've covered their personal products. That's usually what takes them to millionaires. But a lot of bloggers start out doing just ads and affiliate products. So if you do just ads, for instance, you could do two main types of ads. So like Google AdSense, which is like CPM and all that stuff, which basically just shows ads. So you look at like entrepreneur.com, you'll notice that like if you go to a regular page on there, they'll usually have ads posted all over the blog. Um, and you can have up to like three of those on a page. So like you saw that that ad right there for Sprint, that's probably a Google AdSense ad right there. Maybe it's a private ad, but usually that's what an AdSense ad looks like, is something like that. Um, making sense of sense, they usually have some sort of ads, you know, like here's an AdSense ad probably, probably right here. So that's kind of what that looks like. And then that's one of the easier ones to get access to. That's the same advertising network as YouTube. Um, and a lot of people rely on that, but the top earners, the top millionaires will usually just have like 10 or 15% of their income coming from something like that. And then you have, um, once you have something like that, you can do private ads or you could just skip AdSense altogether and just go straight to private ads. So you'll notice like johnchow.com has, has ads. If you click on a blog post, usually you'll see something on the right side and it'll be like a, a group of ads. So you'll see these ads over here. You could probably contact them and pay them for uh, putting ads there as a private ad. Now you could also do that with affiliate links. 
Um, but I'm sure a lot of these are private ads that you negotiate with the company. And then another thing you can do is, of course, um, ads for like a podcast. Now, if you want to start a podcast and start using your blog for like show notes as well, which is what Pat Flynn and uh, John Lee Dumas do with Entrepreneur on Fire and Smart Passive Income, you could use a site like midroll.com to find advertisers for your podcast or they'll just contact you directly. You wanna have a media kit like this. If you're gonna have private ads, you want to uh, just look at like media kit examples on Google Images, and you'll notice that a lot of these um, just display like your numbers, your demographic, how much traffic you get per month, and um, what niche you're in, all of that stuff. How many followers you have on each social media site. Those are the types of things that advertisers will want to know. So you're just bypassing the third party like Google AdSense and just making a deal directly with the company that would have the ads. So those are another, that's another way that you can do this. And the last thing is you want to make sure you're building your brand in a way that people recognize it when they see it on the internet instantly, that spreads fast, that gets kind of a cult following, uh, cult-like following, I should say. and really gets like a lot of just true fans that just love everything you do so when when it comes to building a brand that people just really love like those four websites have done one thing that i would recommend you do is read a book called primal branding so primal branding all one word create belief systems that attract communities look that up on amazon you can get it in pretty much any form, whether you like audiobook, ebook, or hardcover or paperback, however you want to read this. But it tells you about seven ways that the biggest brands, the most loved brands, have built a really passionate following. So, like Apple, for instance, is one that they talk about. A lot of people have everything Apple their laptop, their tablet, their phone their TV, all of it's Apple because they love Apple and Apple has built such a loyal following. And then they'll talk about how these different companies build that. So there's seven aspects to this. Obviously, I recommend you just read the whole book. I'm not gonna go over this whole thing right now and do a whole book summary, but there are seven aspects to these brands. You have a story, like an origin story. So like a, like a rags to riches story, for instance, would be something a lot of people resonate with. Um, you have creed, you have kind of what your beliefs are for the company, you have icons. Um, so an icon, for instance, would be, you know, like, let's say um, Ninja and his iconic blue spiky hair and Dr. Disrespect with his mustache and his wig and his sunglasses. So those would be like a few examples of icons or like the logo, you know, some of those types of things. Um, would be icons. You have someone like Elon Musk who would be, I guess you could make the case that he's like the icon for Tesla um, or at least one of them. Rituals, you have language, you have pagans, which are non-believers. So like for Apple, a pagan or a non-believer would be like an Android user. Um, so you can kind of, you know, you know, they don't necessarily denounce Android users, but they kind of make it to where everything is Apple and you want to get all your accessories from Apple. You want to get everything from Apple. You know, some other companies do that as well. You look at like, like Dell, for instance, Dell computers. A lot of times they do stuff like that as well. If it's not Dell or if it's not made by Dell, in many cases, it's hard to get stuff for them. So you also have leaders. So those are the seven aspects. You have the story, creed, icons, rituals, language, pagans, and leader. And so that book will cover all of that. Um, a few examples, again, an icon for a brand would be like the blue hair that people recognize from Ninja. Um, a, a leader of a company would be uh, Elon Musk. He's a big part of their brand because people love him specifically. And then you have like people who don't use the product, which would be like Android users who don't use Apple products. So like Apple users would kind of frown at Android users and they do things like they change the color of your text message to make um, Android users seem not as cool as Apple users. So those are some of the ways that you can build a brand and just you know establish that 
based on the principles in, in the uh, in the book called Primal Branding. So to just recap, find your niche specifically, stick to that niche like those bloggers did. You want to do daily content of build an email list. All of them build an email list and all of them have tens or at least hundreds of thousands of email followers. That's how you sell stuff usually with the best return on investment is building an email list. Then you have uh, monetization. Usually most of these bloggers make most of their money from affiliate marketing ads and their own products. Those are the three main ways they're making most of their money. And then they build a brand that recognizes them everywhere they go and uh, is very loyal to them using the seven aspects that you can learn in the primal branding book. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If you want to learn more about uh, making money online and things like that, check out that playlist right there in the top right. I'll have more videos that show you other ways that you can do this kind of stuff and examples, websites you can use, all of that. And you can also check the show notes at selfmadesuccess.com. So hopefully this was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next video.